Hey guys, I'm back. Let's read chapter 14. Whirlpool? The only thing Gregor could think of was that game. His cousins had an old, round, above-ground pool. All the kids would try to run around in a circle and make the water swirl around so that there was a sort of funnel effect in the middle. He knew there were real whirlpools in the ocean, but he'd never even seen a picture of one. Gregor jumped to his feet and tried to make sense of the situation. Everyone was up, but they were confused, too. The Underlanders usually faced an emergency with precision, as if they drilled for the crisis a million times. Gregor had a feeling that none of them had ever dealt with a whirlpool, either, and that they had no emergency response at the ready. Photos Globo and Zap were burning at full brightness, but there still wasn't enough light to see far out into the water. Gregor pulled out the biggest flashlight he had, one with a wide sweeping beam, and clicked it on. What he saw took his breath away. The boats were on the outer edge of a huge vortex. The whirlpool must have been at least a hundred yards wide. The water was rushing at a... So a hundred yards wide is like a, a football field. So the whirlpool um, is that big. So that's pretty big. <clears throat> the water was rushing at a dizzying speed, grasping at anything in its reach, carrying it around and around until it was sucked down into a black, gaping hole in the center. Howard and Merrith were shouting at each other across the rope that tethered the two boats together. I am cutting loose! Howard yelled as he began to hack away at the rope between them. No, Merith cried. The flyers will carry us out. They can only take one boat. Do it, Merith. Pandora can come back for me, Howard shouted, and the rope severed under his sword. He was just in the nick of time. The lead boat containing Howard, Pandora, Twitchtip, and Zap was snagged by the outer ring of the whirlpool and carried off into the maelstrom. It was only a matter of seconds before the second boat would meet the same fate. Gregor lunged for the stern for Boots, who was half asleep so he could get her back in her life jacket. He'd taken it off so she could sleep comfortably. Obviously, that had been a bad decision. He fumbled with the jacket's tangled straps. The boat suddenly yanked to the side. It's got us! Gregor cried out. But then there was an upward jerk. Gregor sprawled forward, barely avoiding crushing boots, and found they were rising out of the water. The bats! The bats were lifting them using the rope loops on the, side of the sides of the boats. Aurora and Andromeda were in the front, Eris and Pandora in the back. Go, Pandora! Eris can take it! Go! Gregor heard Merith order. Eris spread his feet, holding his own loop in one claw and grasping Pandora's in his other. The boat dipped down a bit, but the big black bat soon had it under control. Man, he's strong, thought Gregor. Pandora hovered for a moment to make sure Eris had things covered, then dove. Gregor leaned over the side of the boat to see what was happening. They were fifty feet above the water now, safe from the clutches of the raging whirlpool, but below them it was another matter. The lead boat, with Howard and Twitchtip clinging to the mast, was spinning helplessly around in the whirlpool, smashing into debris, buckling under the pressure of the current. Except for the light from Gregor's flashlight, the boat was in complete darkness. This is certainly an inconvenience, said a whiny voice by his ear. Gregor turned to see Zap sitting on a coil of rope. It was my turn to sleep, too. I hope Photo's Glow Glow does not think this means I will cover his next shift. Zap! What are you doing? Get down there so they can see, said Gregor. Oh no, we never agreed to go into dangerous situations. We are not fed enough for that, said Photos Glow Glow, and then he actually yawned. Gregor spun back around to the whirlpool in time to see Howard launch himself out over the water, arms straight out to his sides. Pandora caught him by the arms and carried him straight up to safety. She set Howard in a soggy pile on the floor and took her rope handle back from Eris. 
Down in the water, Twitch Tip was still clinging desperately to the mast, the other boat. The boat was quickly approaching the inner rings of the whirlpool and the black hole in the center. Wait a minute, Gregor cried. Aren't you going back in for Twitch Tip? There was no answer. He looked to Mara, to Luxa, to Howard, dripping and panting on the floor. Something in their faces made a chill go through him. She's going to drown, you know. We've got to get in there. It is not possible, Overlander, said Mara. We cannot reach her by boat. A single flyer could not gr get hold of her. It is not possible. Luxa, said Gregor. She was a queen. She could probably make them if she wanted to. I think Merith is right. We will risk more loss in the effort, and the likelihood of success is almost non-existent, said Luxa. But we need her. We need her to navigate in the labyrinth, said Gregor. Why were, we, why were they just standing there? The bats will be sufficient, said Merith, and they can be trusted. Oh, so that was it. Now he understood. It's because she's a rat, he said. You're just going to sit here and watch her drown because she's a rat, right? If it were Howard or Andromeda or even Temp, you'd be down there all right, but not for a rat. You, you'd probably have killed her already if you could have. Below him, Twitchtip's boat snapped in two. She clung to the wreckage for a few seconds, and then it was swept out of her grasp. She clawed her way through the water, fighting to keep from going under, but she wouldn't last long.